If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. The secret to solving these capacitor circuit problems is to simplify the circuit until there is only one capacitor remaining. And so that's going to become our goal. For example, we can see that these two capacitors right here are in parallel with one another. And we know that for parallel capacitors, the equivalent capacitance is simply going to equal the sum of the individual capacitances. So we can actually combine these two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor by following this equation. Indeed, we can do the same thing for these two capacitors because they too are in parallel. So in essence, we're going to add the capacitances for these two as well as for these two and redraw the circuit with only two total capacitors. Let's take a look at what that would be. So here we have the capacitor that was derived by adding these two together. So one microfarad plus five microfarads gave us the six microfarads, and then eight plus four microfarads gives us 12 microfarads. Now we have two capacitors that are in series with one another. And for series capacitors, it's a little more complex because it turns out that we have to use a reciprocal type of equation where we have one over the equivalent capacitance is equal to one over the first capacitance plus one over the second capacitance. We can call this capacitor C1 and this one C2 and plug those capacitances in over here. And then we'll add these two fractions together. Don't forget to find a common denominator. So if we multiply this by two and up here by two, we'll have two over 12 and then add that to one over 12 gives us three over 12. And then we could actually flip both sides of the equation here and that's going to tell, tell us that the equivalent capacitance is equal to 12 over 3 microfarads, which of course is just 4 microfarads. So that means that we can collapse these two capacitors into a single capacitor whose capacitance is 4 microfarads. Let's take a look at that. So now we have the circuit boiled down to just a single capacitor, which you may recall was our goal. Now once we do this, we want to calculate the total charge that is present on this equivalent capacitor we know that the charge on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. Now the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor will simply be the potential supplied by the battery. So we can come over here, we can plug in the four microfarads for the capacitance and multiply that by the 24 volts. And when we compute this, we get 96 microcoulombs. Now, this is the total charge present on this capacitor right here. And what we want to do next is actually work our way backwards until we reach the original circuit. Now, when working backwards, we have to obey these two rules, and we'll see more clearly what this means as we go. The first rule says that we're going to carry charge backwards to series, and we want to emphasize charge and series. Now, if you look at this circuit here, Notice we're moving backwards from this capacitor to these two. And these two are in series, as we noted earlier. And according to this first rule, we're going to carry the charge with us. So that means we take this 96 microcoulombs and we place that charge on this capacitor as well as this capacitor. Now, before we move backwards to the original circuit, we're going to go ahead and calculate the volts present on this capacitor as well as this capacitor here. Now, again, we know that that volts is equal to charge divided by capacitance. So look at this capacitor right here. If we take the charge of 96 microcoulombs and divide it by the capacitance of six microfarads, we would get 16 volts. Similarly, if we take the charge of, excuse me, over here, if we take the charge of 96 microcoulombs and divide it by the capacitance of 12 microfarads, we would get 8 volts. Now we're ready to move backwards to the original circuit, and we're going to follow this rule right here. This rule tells us to carry volts back to parallel capacitors. So if we move backwards from this capacitor to these two right here, we'll notice that these two are in parallel. So we're going to take with us the eight volts and place it on that capacitor as well as that capacitor. Similarly, when we move backwards from this capacitor to these two over here, we're going to bring with us the 16 volts because these two capacitors are in parallel. So we'll go ahead and put 16 volts on each one of these capacitors. 
we are finally ready to calculate the charge on each of the four capacitors because all we need to do is turn back to the fact that charge equals capacitance times the volts. So for this capacitor right here, if we take the capacitance of one microfarad and multiply it by the 16 volts, we would get a charge of 16 microcoulombs. Similarly, over here, we multiply the capacitance of five microfarads by the volts of 16, and we would get 80 microcoulombs, and so on. So we'll simply multiply the capacitances by the volts. This would give us 32 microcoulombs, and over here we would have 64 microcoulombs. And so these four charges are the charges on each of the capacitors. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.